Hello, everyone. Uh, this presentation is titled Community Archive Infrastructures, the Lavender Library Oral History Project. Uh, my name is Aaron Benedetti. Uh, there I am. Uh, I use he, him, his pronouns, and the date is November 2nd, 2022. Um, image description, uh, the title and my name and the date are displayed in white text on a lavender slide. And there is a video inset uh, of me. I'm uh, wearing a pink beanie uh, and a lavender shirt because I wanted to match the theme. Um, and some rose-rimmed uh, reading glasses. Um, I'm a white man, I have a beard. And you can see a white microphone in the corner of the video feed here. Um, these are the same microphones that we've been using for the oral history project, so I thought they would be um, fitting to use for this uh, showcase. Um, so um, I received a Mellon Public Scholars grant um, for summer 2022, and the project that this funded and is continuing to fund is um, an oral history project that I've conducted um, through and in conjunction with the Lavender Library. Um, I say I've conducted it. Um, what this really means is that I got the grant funding for it, um, and this has been very much a collaborative project. Um, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll as I'll, I'll talk about later, it, it will outlast the, the grant period for sure. Um, so the Lavender Library has been my um, community partner, to borrow the language of the grant. Um, on, on screen now are two images from uh, the inside of the library. Um, the left-hand image is um, pre-renovation. Um, so this was taken several years ago. Um, you see the uh, library stacks lined up. Um, we're looking down, down a row of stacks here. They're all laden with books. Um, there's a small rainbow flag attached to the, the nearest stack, the end of it. And down at the um, past the last stack, you can see the uh, front window of the Lavender Library. Um, the image on the right is uh, post-renovation, um, and you can see our new circulation desk. Uh, it's a minimalist white desk. There are two volunteers working the desk, one seated, one standing. And uh, behind them are some uh, you know, various office equipment and one of the new um, murals that's been painted since we've renovated at the Lavender Library. Um, so the library itself, it's located in Midtown Sacramento. Um, it's on 21st Street, if you're looking for it, between N and O. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, if you don't know about us, we're an all-volunteer lending library. Um, we also have an archive, and we are a cultural space. Um, so we host different kinds of meetings, um, events, um, and different kinds of, you know, cultural gatherings, I guess, for, for people in Sacramento um, and, and for local communities. Um, all of these things center um, LGBT, gender nonconforming, gender expansive, um, intersex, and, um, you know, queer people of, of various types, um, and queer communities and queer media. Uh, the, the Lavender Library was founded in 1998 under a previous name, um, and it was essentially a holdover of, of the library that was originally housed at, at the Lambda Center, which is now called the Sacramento LGBT Community Center. That library was at risk of closing because of um, funding constraints, and so those materials were um, released to the people who founded LACE. Um, with the goal of preserving them in a library and a creative space that was explicitly oriented toward um, queer issues or in, in the language those people use LGBT issues. Uh, and so now, you know, that space still exists. We've renovated it um, during the pandemic while we were closed, excuse me, while we were closed for a couple of years. And um, and now that space um, is described by one of our current volunteers as uh, equal parts sex shop, research library, and community space. Um, so uh, I'll show another image now. Um, this is an image of the uh, front window of the library facing 21st Street. Um, so we're we're looking in from the sidewalk here. Um, image description, there's a, a blue chair on the sidewalk. Um, there's an empty library cart to the left and um, displayed in the window are um, the Lavender Library's original uh, logo that's since been been redesigned. Um, a variety of sticky notes, flyers, one of them reads uh, Black Trans Lives Matter, and there's a big poster about our renovations. 
Um, so, so yeah, that's that's the space. Um, I have been uh, a volunteer at the Lavender Library for um, for about gosh three four years. So 2019 is when I I first kind of came on as a volunteer. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I was trained as a volunteer, I worked in that space, and I eventually um, joined the collections committee, which is the, the group of volunteers who make decisions about and help manage the, um, the circulating library collection and also the non-circulating special collections and archives. Um, I was interested in those things um, through my dissertation research, which is connected to archives and queer history. Uh, and, um, and I also wanted to be involved with this space because it's, it's a really great space. And I was, I was looking for a type of, a kind of community and a, a kind of social engagement, I guess, that, that the university isn't really great at providing. So, um, so I, I, yeah, I, I moved into the space as a volunteer. Um, the next slide is titled Why Oral History? Um, and I, I should say that I, I had encountered oral histories, you know, through my um, research. So I'm a, a PhD candidate in the cultural studies graduate group here, and I have an emphasis in feminist theory and research. My my actual dissertation is connected to queer history and archives, like I mentioned, and um, you know, in sort of doing a lot of this research, I, I encountered a lot of older oral history research that that is pretty well known in queer studies and pretty foundational to a lot of queer studies work, um, especially stuff from the 90s. And um, some of it has, I guess, fallen out of fashion now, um, academically speaking. Um, but I find it really, you know, it's really rich with detail and it's really, to me, it's really inspiring. Um, and so as I was doing this research, I was becoming, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very much an amateur when it comes to actually doing oral history, but um, I was encountering a whole lot of the the kind of theory of oral history um, and the politics of oral history, which I, I find really kind of inspirational. Um, so I'll explain some of it here. So so oral history um, is essentially a strategy of historical preservation that prioritizes the experiences of individuals and communities over the experiences or, or operations of, of institutions. So, so basically, instead of telling history top down from the perspective of the expert we're telling history from the bottom up and kind of making people experts of their own experience um, oral history inverts uh, historical practices that center the operations and perspectives of powerful hegemonic institutions like state agencies like medicine and like some parts of academia um, and the reason for this is that the histories generated by such hegemonic institutions tend to record details of marginalized people's encounters with these institutions, but they don't necessarily record our encounters with one another or with the social and cultural worlds that escape and exceed these institutions. So to give an example, um, one that's really important for, for many queer and trans people, um, if we think about the institution of medicine and, and, and you know, various medical agencies or, or um, you know, medical organizations. Uh, many of us encounter those institutions through, um, you know, through our interactions with doctors or clinicians. And medical records can be really important as indicators of how queer and trans people are navigating some aspects of the world. Um, but they clearly don't tell the entire story. Um, and they obviously don't tell us much about how um, queer and trans people are connecting with each other and forming relationships with each other outside the scope of what what medicine kind of understands as relevant. So, um, you know, to give an example of this, if you know, one that is, I'm I'm sure others have experienced, but but um, visiting the clinic, tell, you know, and having having a, a clinician record the number of sexual partners that you've had, um, that tells us something that can be useful historical information. For someone, um, but it doesn't tell us anything about what um, sexual cultures look like necessarily. Um, it gives a very, very limited view of that. And so, one of the things that oral history can do is to counter these kinds of um, hegemonic historical records by providing a perspective from below, um, or providing a perspective um, on these aspects of social life that kind of escape um, escape a view from from big institutions or from hegemonic institutions. Um, and so the reason this is important is because um, controlling, uh, forgetting, or erasing community histories, these histories from below, um, is a really powerful technique of marginalization and political oppression. 
And what this means is that oral history work then has the potential to be um, very liberatory and to, to serve the aims of, of social justice. Um, I very specifically didn't want to state here that oral history work is equivalent to liberation or to social justice. Um, you know, like like any kind of academic work, um, in, in my view, um, oral history has the potential to be used for a variety of political purposes. Um, but uh, but I, I hope that um, the work that, that we're doing at the Lavender Library um, to, to build an oral history archive um, can contribute to kind of fostering a grassroots community history um, and to, you know, it can contribute to kind of fostering the lives and experiences of queer and trans people um, in posterity. Um, so a few notes on, um, hi, it's me again, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm back on screen now. Um, a few thoughts about the work that we've done over the summer. Um, most of what we have been doing, you know, I, I had sort of envisioned that most of our work would be um, actually conducting interviews. Um, that's actually been so far a relatively small part of the work. Um, most of the work we've been doing 